Hey, good afternoon everyone. Trackman 44 here. It's time to clean up just a little bit of the slab wood and everything around the sawmill. So uh, nothing better to do than get the old Kubota out with the buzzsaw. Uh, I know a lot of you have seen the old buzzsaw videos, but uh, there's probably, hopefully, going to be a couple of new viewers that uh, aren't aware that I do a lot of the buzzsaw videos. For those of you that aren't aware of, of, of this or how I use it, don't be real alarmed. You know, what I'm doing is not really dangerous. It's dangerous for people that are inexperienced, but for a person that's been using buzz saws like this uh, in excess of 60 years, because I started by the time I was 10 years old, I already had a, a pretty good amount of time under my belt on this, work with the old man, you know. But for a person that's used them as, and been around as much as I have, uh, and never having had an accident because you just grew up with them, you know, there's no danger whatsoever. The main thing that you want to do, if you bring some of this old stuff back to the forefront and use it for modern day wood processing. Just remember the three basic things. You want to wear a composite, so, a composite toed shoe and you want to have earring protection and you definitely want to have eye protection. These are uh, safety lens uh, rated glasses but you really should have sh side shields or full safety wrap around glasses because some of the chips and stuff do go a flying off of them. But the worst is the piercing sound the blade meeting the wood does to your ears. It's worse than a chainsaw. So let's go ahead and uh, make a little sawdust, make a little noise.
You know, you might notice on some of this cedar, if it's not real knotty, I cut it real short. I cut it about six or seven inches and just toss them in the wood pile. That way I've got kindling all winter long as it comes in from the woodshed. I can just split kindling on the hearth or whatever or down the basement and, uh, you know, I don't have to uh, keep it in a separate location. Now by the time we get done with the video, you'll be able to see right there at that tree behind me, you're going to see a big old pile of uh, larger slabs like this one here you're going to, you're going to see me throw down. Uh, whenever they're big like that, it's too much, uh, too, just too large to put into the fireplace. I'll go ahead and bust those by hand with a split maul and toss them in the woodshed whenever I'm stacking the, uh, I'm stacking the wood later in the, in the week. Now if you noticed, 
I was tossing wood in different locations. When I'm slinging them way off down in the back, that's just junk wood. That's just going to be for burning in the outside shed. And you saw me stacking them on the outside of the woodshed right near the tree. Those are the ones that are the slabs that are actually too wide. Uh, and I'll bust them up by hand with a uh, with a split maul and toss those in. They're just a little too wide. I don't like them to be that big, you know, for uh, for inside the house, you know. So I just bust those real quick and toss them right in the woodshed. There's not that many. There's only 30 or 40 of them. By the time I get done, there might be 50 or 60. But I do have a little bit more to do, but I'm not going to do it on video because you all got enough of a, an idea. The old timers already know, uh, and this is primarily for new viewers that might not be familiar with buzz saws or have heard all the horror stories and how terribly dangerous these things are. And you can see many, many times, you know, my hand appears to be very close to the blade. And in some times it really is. But if you look really, really close, the vast majority of the times my right hand is near the blade. This part of my wrist right here, my palm, is actually run on that iron guard around the outside of the saw. If I was to slip or whatever, I'd have to be extremely uncoordinated in order for me to fall into the um, into the blade. And like I say, it's it's all techniques that you have to develop, you know, for yourself if you happen to get one uh, or have one and haven't used it in years and years. Um, you know, you just develop your own techniques and just bear in mind, it will bite you and it'll bite you pretty quick, but there ain't nothing to be afraid of. And it is a very, very viable wood processing machine for small sawmill slabs and also for small round wood, what was called those pole wood or limb wood. So you know what? I have beat this one here to death, and this is Tractor Man 44, and I'm out of here, guys.